This video is brought to you by the 3 Minute Board Game Patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia ora koutou and welcome to Eternal Palace in about 3 minutes. Review copy used. It has a solo mode, it's a game for 1-5 to five players, playing time is medium, and it's a moderately complex game. You are the head of the noble family, pledged to support the Emperor in rebuilding an abandoned palace. Can you win the most favour from the Emperor? The game ends once one player has completed a painting with 8 layers. The winner is the player with the most points and you get those from painting layers and features, as well as owning monuments and other bonus goals. Dice. Each player has up to 5 dice to use each turn. Worker placement. The dice are placed to take actions, either single or in groups. Engine building. You can get an army of advisors to help you. Player turn. Each player starts with 3 dice, placing their other 2 dice on the board for later. Everyone rolls their dice and the turn order starts with the player with the lowest roll and moves upwards. Behind your screen assign dice. They can be either singles or in groups. You will then use those dice to take the action matching the number on the board. Here we draw 3 advisors keeping 1. We either pay its cost in the top left and gain 3 fish, or pay 3 fish. Each location will have a player marker on it. When you place in that spot, advance your marker. If you get to the end, claim a painting layer, and if you are first, take the red token and get a feature. These layers are numbered, and you can only claim each one once. This location lets you choose one of the three advisors from the table, either paying their cost to gain two wisdom, or spending two wisdom. Advisors can be used once per full turn for their ability. Tap them to show they have been activated. Other advisors have one-time effects. These are marked with the lightning bolt symbol. Resource locations give you various amounts of resources based on the number of dice placed. Here that is one wood for one die, or three wood for two dice. This variation is repeated at the three other resource locations with each of them having a different reward based on the number of dice used. These locations have monuments, and to claim one you must spend the amount of resources in the circle, and then add one to the circle. This is true for all four monuments. Gaining a monument will advance you on this track here. Another player can later take that monument place off you by paying more. This location gives you three wisdom, and each time you place a dice pair here, you can mark the matching spot. Do that twice to claim the feature. This spot may only have one die placed at a time, but advance along it that many spaces, claiming the rewards as you go. Here you place dice to gain the rewards listed below, and once you've marked a pair, claim the feature. And you can always use these spots with one or more dice. At the end of a turn, the players with the least dice, or at a tie, the last places, gain an extra die for the next turn. Why would you like this game? What surprised me most about Eternal Palace is that it is way simpler and easier to play than it initially looks. With all those possible locations I thought the game would be quite grindy, but it's actually quite pleasant. Assembling the painting is a fun way to track scoring, and I like that you can only claim one layer from each spot, and with features being bonus points, there's always pressure to advance. The advisors added a little bit of variable player powers into the mix and let you build a support engine, which is nice, and I really dig that some require you to gift resources to other players. All up, Eternal Palace is a pleasant dice placement game with enough good decision making to keep you interested and suitable for most groups. The best thing about this game is the player in last place getting the extra die. It's a nice little catch up mechanic, but you can also game it. However, the theme isn't my cup of tea and I have no idea if it's being done well or not. And I'm not sure about the hidden action dice selection, I think the game might have been more fun and tactical with dice assignments on the fly instead. For a different take on dice placement, check out the same publisher's Dice Hospital. Or alternatively, check out Circadian's First Light. Eternal Palace. It's not as busy as its paintings. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.